Hi, um, thanks for having me here. Uh, thanks, Jinmei, Donna, and the organizers. Um, yeah, so basically I'm here today to, well, not try to sell the company I'm working for, but we're, I think we're working on some stuff that's pretty cool. And um, to give a little bit more background, I used to work in a research institute, and um, basically in Singapore, I squared R, we did the uh, automatic speech recognition. And what that means is that basically I sit around and write papers and uh, build publications and <coughs> mentor students and it can be very far removed from uh, actual applications that like actual uh, things that you actually build product and sell. So going from there, um, I had a chance encounter uh, uh, with a friend that was uh, starting a, a company, well he was a vice president of a company in uh, Silicon Valley and he said we're building this really cool chip over there and why don't you join us and make something useful in our life instead of writing papers all the time. So that's what I did. And um, uh, so I'm in this company called Movo Mine, and our company is interested in building, uh, and that's, that's pretty much the whole team in Santa Clara. And um, this is like 20 strong, but we have a situation where we have a sort of a full stack kind of a uh, approach to so people working on hardware, designing uh, uh, RTL, uh, doing a board design, uh, software stack applications, AI engineering and models, the whole, the whole shebang basically. And um, being going from something that's very academic to something that's really a uh, startup and it's a life of death situation, every single minute counts, you've got to make product or you're going to get basically out of the job. And um, that's uh, very exciting to me and also um, I, I, I feel that that's a, a chance to build something that's, that's useful. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, one reason why I decided to move, this is going to get a bit more technical, yeah. but one reason why I decided to move is because of the founder, uh, we had uh, Dr. Ren Wu, who uh, used to be a, a distinguished scientist in Baidu, and he did a lot of uh, uh, breakthrough work in uh, heterogeneous uh, computing, and he did a lot of stuff on uh, being one of the first people to start using GPUs to uh, train uh, AI models. Yeah, so what is Novomind? So, uh, this is going to look a bit less like a slide deck in a couple of minutes, a pitch deck in a couple of minutes. But basically, we are a full stack AI company, and the core of our company we're trying to build is an uh, AI chip. And you may see a lot of companies nowadays that say that they're trying to build an AI chip, but what does that really mean? And um, uh, if you look at uh, the current uh, applications that are available today, things that you can do with. Um, uh, yeah. If you look at uh, what, what, what comes to mind when you talk about uh, artificial intelligence, what can you do today, right? And um, uh, many things are not really possible unless you have that compute and the data to train the models to do it. And um, we, we see that it's going to, we, we believe that uh, uh, with uh, the technology that has a more, um, uh, being, by creating technology and enable people to actually bring uh, artificial intelligence models, not just from uh, uh, very uh, uh, platforms with a lot of compute, to something that's more to embedded in nature. Yeah. So maybe I'll just skip through this one. Um, yeah. So so I think um, the key thing is that if you look at what's people claim to be uh, AI chips today, right? There might be a whole bunch of uh, different uh, companies that are building uh, 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 neural network accelerators. And um, on one end, you have uh, things that may be very low power, but at the same time, if you have not a lot of power, you can't do a lot of performance. So you can't do a lot of uh, uh, compute. So the amount of compute that you can do is really uh, sort of, amount of compute processing power you have sort of, uh, uh, controls like how much, uh, what kind of application can do. So if you look at, um, on the other end, if you have um, uh, more uh, higher uh, power profiles, like going from uh, like very low power to very high power, with like a, all the way down to a GPU card from NVIDIA, like uh, 250 watts can do a lot of processing, but then it's, it's very costly. So if it's very costly in the power budget. So you cannot imagine if you have a drone that's flying around, you can't stick a GPU card in it and go around and start doing computer vision at real, real time sort of uh, analysis. And that's why I believe uh, what we're trying to do here is trying to find a sweet spot where we can actually uh, provide a, a lot of uh, computing uh, performance at a low power budget and that enables more applications to come about. So that's what we're really trying to build as a company, a chip at the core of it. And from there, we hope that it can enable more applications. And it's been an exciting journey because after joining the company for like about a year and a half, and uh, starting from 
uh, almost nothing. Uh, getting to the point where we have a first prototype with the PGA and followed by the ASIC, the uh, uh, application-specific IC, and uh, getting a chip back from Foundry. Um, every day is a, a lot of excitement. There's like uh, uh, the boards break. There's lots of uh, uh, firefighting going on, and and every single moment we feel that we're trying to bring this uh, chip towards product towards the market, and it's almost to the point where we are ready to show some cool applications and start to uh, and uh, talk to people to see that we can enable more um, exciting applications to come about. Yep, so this is where we are trying to place ourselves. Um, with low power, but the performance of a GPU uh, class kind of machine. So if you look at uh, what NVIDIA Xavier can do, maybe we are, we are looking at a power profile that's less than it, but uh, equivalent amount of performance. So the performance numbers here are teraops. Uh, trillions of operations per second, and a lot of tricks people are used to actually get that number. Um, if you if you run a GPU, for instance, usually it's like a 16-bit or 32-bit floating point calculation, and to get a lower power profile, you might do things like you might do quantization, uh, um, you might uh, do some certain kinds of custom architectures, and you'll get that uh, performance. And um, what is it we do that makes this possible? So I think this is probably the key slide in explaining what we are trying to do here. If you look at the evolution of computing, right, you start with uh, traditional um, uh, CPUs, like general purpose computers. Then as you go more and more and more specialized, uh, going from uh, the CPU to uh, DSP chips to GPUs, increasing the amount of parallelism that you do with your compute. So like for GPUs, you can have like lots and lots of cores and graphics processing units, right? You have uh, you, you handle a lot of hardware to basically run a lot of stuff at once. It becomes more and more specialized at um, so at the expense of not being able to run any general purpose algorithm, you, we have, you have very specialized hardware that allows you to uh, 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 run certain kinds of applications much faster. And uh, what we claim in our, we actually filed and got a patent on this, that uh, with the Nova Tensor chip, the uh, uh, ASIC that we designed, we're going a step further by going with so much specialization that uh, you can uh, get an equivalent amount of compute, but much less power. But what kind of specialization are we talking about? This is a neural network accelerator, really. And if you look at what people are doing in um, uh, artificial intelligence, they basically deep learning, uh, a lot of neural networks, a lot of topologies are very similar. If you look at uh, computer vision, for instance, everybody's doing a convolutional neural network. network. You, j you really don't need a lot of stuff. You just need a three by three convolution, a one by one convolution, ResNet, Roughly that kind of architecture, and if you just build something for it specific to that, and just target one thing, do one thing really, really well, and then uh, that's all we need. So, yeah. So starting from last year, we started with um, uh, the evolution of the hardware. Uh, there's uh, a lot of iteration back and forth with designing the uh, RTL, and we started with FPGA. Uh, cards with Xilinx and we uh, uh, built our, uh, we basically built like entire uh, neural network processing core into uh, the vet vertex and then um, e even then we, uh, and, and last year we also uh, uh, demoed some applications at uh, CS and, and uh, that was an exciting task for us and then uh, last year in um, near the end of the year we got our first uh, version so with the same logic um, we uh, worked with uh, uh, one of the foundries to uh, build uh, ASIC, application specific IC, and the chip came back and today we have this guy. So it's hiding under the fan here. It's the memory banks here and whatnot. And it plugs through a PCI interface to this main motherboard. So this is one device that I brought back to a client uh, today. And um, well, I don't have it with me, but it's at my client's side. And, and this, um, with the core uh, chip, is able to run uh, uh, pretty much uh, most computer vision and uh, types of uh, 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 neural networks and uh, yeah so how this works is basically with the current device that you saw uh, let's see yeah so there's a, like a host CPU with a host memory and then uh, the uh, a general purpose computer here will actually take care of uh, the rest of the uh, control logic for applications talk to our device here which is a PCIe board and we have an onboard DMA controller and our core. This is the stuff that runs the neural network processing. 
and on device memory to hold all the weights and for your uh, new network, right? And we also develop an application workflow. So this is my main job really nowadays, just to like develop an application workflow and do the runtime so that you can actually make it uh, simple to use this stuff. Because if you have a new piece of device, it's useless if you can't actually make full use of it. And um, for in terms of uh, uh, artificial intelligence, like really what you want is a lot of machine learning stuff is basically, you have the data set, you have a, a specific problem you want to solve. Let's say you want to be able to recognize cats, for instance, you just collect lots of pictures of the cats, then uh, get a training database, train the model, and then from here we uh, provide a tool chain to compile everything that will run on the hardware, and then after that we a benchmark and run it. So we have like this entire workflow that we're trying to set up as well. So some example use cases that we've had so far. I think um, last year we've had, uh, uh, then as a full stack company, we, we, we not just do the chip, we also do everything all the way up to the engineering model training as well. And um, sometime last year, we, we started off with uh, do we building this um, uh, uh, smart endoscopy system. There's a news clip here, but I think I'm going to skip it. So basically what it does is uh, there was this doctor in like this China, DC bunch of doctors in uh, West China, Sichuan, no, I can't remember the place, but in Ch Chinese hospital. And you, you take an endoscope and you stick it into like somebody's colon and then, uh, you know, that sounds a bit gross now. But then it'll, it'll, you, you get live feed from inside and basically you run at 30 frames per second and try and classify and figure out whether or not the guy, the person, the patient you're staring at has you know, a defective colon or not. So all this runs in real time. And that's, not pos that's, that's possible with the hardware acceleration. Okay, we'll skip this. Then, um, CES last year was January. That was a really hectic time in Las Vegas, building um, a real-time uh, classification for this is basically of the ImageNet uh, uh, visual classification uh, task. And then um, we benchmarked it then with the first version of our hardware. Um, we were looking at basically about 120th power profile desktop GPU with about almost half the performance. And then today, this is the second column that's the uh, uh, ASIC version, which is uh, a bit, bit more powerful. So, we we'll talk about some applications. Mostly, we've been doing a lot of computer vision applications. Just a clip of a demo. Um, so, this is real-time object detection that we're running about 60 frames per second, running through the uh, our, our chip. Everything is accelerated here. Yeah. This is basically a YOLO model, so it's open source, and we just like compile everything and stick it on chip, and it just runs. And even though um, largely we, 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 we accelerate only certain kinds of architectures, mostly CNNs, 3x3 convolutions, uh, element-wise sums. So these are uh, topologies like uh, ResNet and um, VGG type of networks. Uh, we're also looking into uh, using these types of topologies to support many other applications because the topology is one thing. As long as you have the data, you can train it. So we can also probably do stuff like um, uh, pretty much everything else you can in AI. As long as the right topology data, we can train and do this the system. Um, here's an interesting one. So let me stick to the next one. Okay. So uh, I don't have a live demo of this, unfortunately, but um, so super resolution is one other interesting use case that we've been playing with. So basically, if you have a lot of high res, if you have a lot of low res images, you can train a, you can train a neural network that takes low resolution images and tries, a, tries to fill in the fine structure of that uh, image and generate a high resolution image. So how does this work? Basically, if you have lots of, let's say, 4K content, downsample it, uh, train a neural network where you feed in the low res downsample data and try and uh, generate the uh, high high resolution image. So if you have lots and lots of pictures of cats, then you train the neural network, then it's going to understand what cats look like. So you get a low res picture of a very blurry cat, you'll be able to draw the whiskers for you basically. So that's the general idea. And uh, we're seeing possible potential applications where if you wanted to have, uh, you have a very big, nice, expensive TV, a 4K or 8K TV, but there's no content. So what are you going to do? We will take uh, stuff from YouTube, text, whatever content you have, and feed it through a neural network and generate uh, generate that content for you. And all this is done on the fly, live, using the hardware. And um, what really um, impressed me at the end of the day is with um, the vision of the founder that we're working for, the vision of the startup, uh, having a chip that's called uh, having the compute ability to enable more uh, interesting applications. And we want to have this vision where we want to be able to enable IoT uh, 
not just IoT, but also what we call an intelligent you know, things. So not just um, a lot more uh, expensive and uh, uh, interesting applications, computer vision uh, type of applications can all be moved from the cloud to the edge. So if another example is if you look at uh, what we have with, for instance, speech recognition today, a lot of stuff is all run off the cloud. You can't, you don't really have the kind of compute in your phone to actually run everything locally for uh, things like large vocabulary speech recognition or like uh, a real-time uh, object detection. And we're seeing that um, by having a platform that can uh, have sufficient compute to run the models that you really want to run and can do all these things on your drones or things with a small power budget. So this is what we're trying to look for. And um, uh, ho hopefully we'll have a dev kit out for people soon then you can play with it. Yeah. So that's what I have for you. Questions? <laughs> okay. Q and A's later as well. I think most yeah, people we've got, hang around. Yeah, so let's go through all the talks in the weekend and go and talk.